So what we can do as women is just to continue tapping each other and to encourage one another and to just be authentic about it and just wanting other women to do well. We can all, we can all do well, we can all move forward, but it just has to, you know, be that individual choice and to be obedient to what's in your heart and the visions. I truly feel that those visions are given to us by our creator. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of I Have Something to Say, where subject matter experts are unafraid and unapologetic about sharing their perspectives regarding issues that impact our lives. They speak up because basically they give a shit. So if you're tired of canned answers and want to finally hear real people cut through the BS and talk about real issues, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Sami Heyman Marrero from Irvinder, and behind our mixer is our producer, Chris Majoka from You Do You. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very special episode of I Have Something to Say. Today, we have guests coming all the way from St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. They're sisters, dear sisters that I met, I want to say it was almost four years ago during the girlfriendism retreat um, that was founded by our sister, Dr. Kanuma Simmons. And today we have Johanna Samuel and Vanessa Farrell. They're both CEOs, they're both entrepreneurs, they're both accomplished speakers and best-selling authors. And welcome, 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 Johanna and Vanessa, how are you? Thank you, we're doing good. Thank you so much for having us. Good. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. And so I know I'll start with you, Johanna. I know that you're a business owner, not a very seasoned at it too, right? You've been <laughs> at this for a hot minute. Um, your business is out of touch accessories, but it's more than that, right? Talk, talk to yes. me about, you know, your business and uh, the work that you do to empower women. Yes, thank you so much, Sammy. So my business is Out of Touch Accessories. And I had a business here in the Virgin Islands, my retail store, for about going on 13 years. And it just so happened in 2017 after our major hurricane, Hurricane Maria. That's when I heard God's private whispers meant just for me to let it go and that I have done everything that I could have done thus far. And in 2019, I made that pivot, not knowing three months later was, of course, the pandemic as we know. So with that being said, that just became a year of just intentional, just being silent and just being in the presence of God. And as time went along, I was asked to speak at conferences, at the conferences, because I've done that prior. And of course, that led me to being asked to be a part of my first book anthology, The Confident Woman Rise. And I did that and became a number one best-selling author. And, you know, in my spirit, in my heart, I kept it to myself until I met Vanessa. Um, what would it be like to, you know, have an anthology here in the islands? Um, so with that being said, it's always been more than just about the fashion. That's one of my slogans that I would repeatedly say for years. And God knew, I would say it, did I quite know what it meant? I just felt it. But everything now, more than ever, I can see that it continues to just, you know, come into fruition that I beautify women, not only on the outer layer, but I just want to tap in. I have this heartfelt desire for women to tap into their heart and their spirit that they too live to their own highest potential and to accomplish every dream, every vision, no matter what it may be. I truly feel that women, there, there are some things that we want to do outside of the family circle, whether it's entrepreneurship or just serving, you know, serving others. So again, yes. it's always been more than just about the fashion. So from my boutique, that has brought me to speaking, now being an author and collaborating with this wonderful individual who have also ta taught me, Miss Vanessa Farrell. <laughs> yes, totally. And Vanessa, you also are about, you know, wellness. And I mean, because your business is, you know, Virgin Islands or VI Health and Wellness Coaching. And so you're about obviously the internal, but also mm -hmm. 
right? The, the, oh, the so Vanessa does the looking good and you're like <laughs> feeling good, right? The feeling good from a physical aspect, right? Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of health disparities in our communities awesome. and you mm -hmm. have been a public servant for a long time too, right? Mm -hmm. You worked in, in the, in the public um, service uh, space um, and, and in health, you know, um, I'm addressing health uh, uh inequities and all of these things and talk to me about how you then transitioned into business ownership honing your expertise in the health space yeah so i always had a passion for health and um, i launched launched vi health and wellness in 2018 um, but it was also a personal journey that got me here to vi health and wellness it was just after the the hurricanes and i was working as a director at a at the department of health and actually a territorial director so i had to oversee um health and wellness throughout the territory and it came where i myself was dealing with some health issues and i had to make the decision to step away from work and to quit work as i would put it um, but in that um, transition i realized that there are not many women who have the opportunity to actually quit their jobs. And because the issue of high blood pressure was something that I was dealing with, I thought to myself, how can I help women who may be struggling as leaders to really manage their heart health, specifically their hypertension and balance their work environment? And that led me to launching VI Health and Wellness Coaching, specifically looking at women and women in leadership role and giving them that opportunity to prioritize and to protect their heart health and to do so without apology. Wonderful. Yes. And so I know that we met, you know, during the first Girlfriendism retreat. Was that in 2019 or 20? No, it was in 2020. 2021. In 2021. Okay. It was a couple of years yes. ago uh -huh. and uh, it was just wonderful. Wasn't it? It was magical. There was just this energy and all of the activities. It's just great because we were able to really sit with each other, mm -hmm. pause with each other, lean in on each other and really get to become intimate with each other's desires yes. and dreams and wants and even the ugly stuff right <laughs> and challenges and you know so it was everything <laughs> yes. from celebration to ranting right it was it was all of it and it was just fantastic and how wonderful that your paths coincided and you happen to have in your heart this same idea right of doing a collection of stories of candid, heartfelt, raw, right? Stories of women of the islands, right? In, in that, in, in that authentic, um, you know, uh, in an authentic narrative. And then here we are two years later and bam, it's done, right? Mm -hmm. Passion mm -hmm. and purpose. You just launched this book on uh, 21 women. Just tell me about the process, the selection of these women, because I'm sure it was hard, right? Because there's so many valuable stories to share. But I know that the key anchor was entrepreneurship. And I think that we don't see that often, right? Usually it's a collection of, you know, different fields and different walks of life. But this is solely, you know, mm -hmm. about entrepreneurs in the Virgin Islands. And so tell me, I mean, uh, uh, Johanna, tell me, how, how what, what sparked you know, this idea and, and how it all began. Yes, when Vanessa and I um, speak, I think sometimes we're like twins because we kind of bounce off of each other as to how it, you know, it all started. So Vanessa, I'm going to let you, um, you know, jump in. But, you know, we were two women, you know, two strangers that sat next to each other and, you know, a conversation eluded. 
while you were speaking, Sammy. So that is what makes it so special, you know, just doing this interview with you and also including you in a snippet of the story of how it all came to be. So, you know, Vanessa and I being entrepreneurs ourselves, and of course, Vanessa has a little bit more experience as she has been a part of, I think, three anthologies. Vanessa, you can correct me. I have just been a part of one. So I was pretty much new to it, but we knew the benefits. We knew the benefits of, as women, just being willing to share a snippet. I say that word again, you know, it was not a, an entire book, but just a snippet of our stories. Because as we know, and as we have always heard, things that we experience, things that we go through, we should be willing to share it because we never know who is sitting next to us, who is in front of us, who is in the back of us, that just needs to hear something inspiring, hear something motivating to where they are in life. So Vanessa and I, we just knew the benefit of it and we wanted to serve. We wanted to serve. And when I ended my anthology in The Confident Woman Rise, my chapter was called Pivot, Pivoted Intentionally. And I ended my chapter by saying, reminding women as they move forward and as they tap into their greatness, don't forget to bring other women along. And that is exactly what transpired um, a, a year and a half later that that was done. So for, so for Vanessa and I to just come together along our journey, because Vanessa, let me tell you, she has some things going on behind the scenes. I have some things that I'm doing, but we wanted just to pause. We wanted to in essence, slow down a little bit and to just look back to our sister girl and to say, you know what, we have an opportunity for you and we are we have created a table and we're asking you, we are inviting you to, to come as they go along their own journey. So for the women who are a part of this book, I mean, we have, a, you know, attorney, we have a um, prior senator, we have individuals who have um, businesses. We have, I'm talking about Keisha Christian who owns her neighborhood pharmacy, you know, so we have women that have done some amazing things within our community and continuing to move abroad. So just coming together and just sharing those snippets of, of, of stories is just really heartfelt. I want to go a bit further by just saying before coming here um, to meet for this podcast, I had two calls from individuals that said, Johanna, this book, oh my goodness, it is so good. One it individual, is. she's getting ready it to is. give birth, getting ready to give birth in the next three days. And for her to say that she didn't read it to herself, she wanted, she, she told the baby, honey, let's read. She's having a boy and she said, let's read. And she read a few chapters and she went on to say how she read Vanessa's chapter. She read two other chapters and she read Auntie Jojo's chapter to the baby. So just to, I'm excited. I'm excited to have the book in hand. But um, Vanessa, you take it away. <laughs> Yes, yes. Just to piggyback on what you said, Joanna, um, being part of previous anthologies, I understood yeah. the sisterhood that comes with being a part of a project like this. And I knew what it did for me when I was in my first, uh, when I was in the first anthology. And I just never, never, never underestimate the power of small beginnings because it was just one chapter. It was just one chapter in a book that really propelled me in into entrepreneurship, propel me into where I am today. So I'm happy that we were obedient in listening yeah. to what God put on our heart. And as a result of our obedience, other women are also walking in their passion and in their purpose and sharing their story. And similar to Johanna, I have gotten so many calls, emails about the wonderful stories that women have shared, the powerful, the inspiring, moving stories. I had one gentleman at church um, on Sunday who came up to me and said, Vanessa, yeah. this book is fire. And I said, okay, so tell me, give me a few examples of what you read. And he was able to give me at least five different stories. And I knew because I have read every single story cover to cover two or three times. So I am so familiar with every one of these women's stories. And I think this particular book will serve as a, you know, as an anthem for young women, especially young women men who are thinking about moving into the entrepreneurship space that what you're seeing now in these women 
it's not what it was yesterday that they went through a mm. process and for those individuals who are in entrepreneurship and they might be going through a hard time they can read this book and be inspired absolutely and you know what that was my reaction too so i started to read it i got i got my my copy i'm going to order the hard copy too um but i have because i want the hard copy so when i see you all i'm going to get everybody's say everybody's you know autograph um mm -hmm. but um that was my reaction too i was like holy moly what is going mm. on here because i was feeling all of the emotions right um, I've read four chapters, um. of course, <laughs> Nessa, Johanna, Shalanda, and Kimmy, but I'm going to read, I'm going to read the rest mm -hmm. of it because I mm -hmm. can't get enough of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell wow. you, you know, I first cried with Vanessa and I'm like, oh my goodness, the way you describe the angst, I was like, of like being fired, right. Of like, like I was like, what is going on here? And it's so raw. And it it was I and because I know you, right? And I love you, then it, it really hit home even further. And mm -hmm. then I read Johanna's um, you know, uh, essay and and I was like, Oh wow, now I'm uplifted, right? <laughs> then, now she picked me apart. Yeah, like she picked mm -hmm. all the pieces and put me back apart, right? Mm -hmm. And then I read Kimmy's and she's hilarious, right? And then, I mean, what she says is that she's talking about death. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. So then I started, it was hilarious, right? And yeah. she's so bubbly and so, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Dr. Kanuma Simmons, thank you, right? Because you made me laugh a lot. And then now I, I just finished reading Shalanda's, right? And Dr. Shalanda Simmons, I was like, okay, so now she's the one that makes you ponder. Yes. Right? So yes. Yeah, she does. Yeah. And so then, so it's more like, you know, like, yeah. wait, wait, what? Like, wait, what? Yes. Right. And so, yes. and so again, every single chapter yes. has like its own mm -hmm. zest. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, like, very strong voices. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but it's not, um, how do you say it's not academic at all. It's just mm -hmm. in like normal conversational, yep. you know, right. Home, yeah. right. It's like, yeah. About and talking about lived experience. So listen, I can't yes. wait to read the rest of it. Um, I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm thankful that you've poured yourself into this. Cause I know it must have not been an easy thing to do. <laughs> Uh, right you see we're laughing here yes ma'am yeah. yeah this was indeed a passion project and i keep repeating that that this was not a financial endeavor for myself or johanna this was a passion project for us and a passion project where we had to work so hard at getting this thing together i think what people are seeing is the product of hard work and sleepless mm -hmm. nights and many <laughs> tears in terms of pulling this together and just recruiting. I know you asked before about the yeah. recruiting process and we started out at the girlfriend, um, girlfriendism for, um, retreat and we started to recruit, recruit folks there. And then we spread the word further looking at some, um, there was a, 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 a woman in business, Facebook group that we started to spread the news there. One person got wind of it and she was all excited. Um, she was from St. Thomas. She was actually a nurse who quit her job and started to create her own hair products. And then wow. she in turn told another uh, nurse and then she in turn told another person who's a doctor and also a, a, a licensed psychotherapist. And then we had another nurse, Dr. Celia nurse. And so we had four, we have four individuals from St. Thomas and those individuals yes. basically rallied again, rally around each other and brought each other into the book project. And then the other folks are from the island of St. Croix mm -hmm. and Johanna being a native daughter of the soil had a lot of those connections 
So she was able to do a lot of outreach and really follow up and talk to folks. And I think it's through that, um, you know, that intimate connection with people that you know and people who trust you and was able to get on the bandwagon with our vision um, mm -hmm. and, you know, to buy into the concept. Because for a lot of folks, it was like, what? How does that work? What does it mean? Do I write a chapter? And then what? Right. Like, once we let folks know what was coming, they really bought into the vision. That's fantastic. That's really fantastic. And please talk to me about the cover and the artist that uh, that, yeah. that it was signed off. As I, I was like, so we'll talk about the, the timing, right? And about the meaning yeah. of the Madras, <laughs> you know, pattern, right? Um, and design. So I, how how did that all come along? So definitely when it came to the book cover, Vanessa and I, of course, before we, you know, actually shared the information, there was some legwork that had to be done um, a few months prior. We just didn't come out and ask individual to be a part of the book. You know, we had to connect with whom our publisher would be. We interviewed mm -hmm. um, some publisher. And of course, we went forward with Miss Talisha Barry in LA of Strive Publishing. And, you know, we were making some decisions. Of course, the book was one. And we really wanted to incorporate the Caribbean. You know, how wonderful yeah. it is to have a book and it was not um, faces, but, you know, it depicted, you know, who we are. Of course, yes. you know, everyone has seen, we have the water and, you know, we have the, the, the sun, we have the sunglasses and even in the little corner, we have the palm tree. So even that, you know, um, you know, was just so beautiful to have and, and, and to bring across. And here it is, our Madras. So there's a whole story behind of that. But, you know, I just want to say that Debbie's son is the um, individual, correct, Vanessa, that um, yes. she's the, the, the founder and brought forth our new local Madras here in the Virgin Islands. So, of course, that is trademarketed. So Vanessa and I, we had to make sure that we um, was able to get the copyright in order to use it. And Vanessa, unknowingly at an event at Buccaneer, <laughs> was telling this individual about this book project and so forth and, you know, showing her the cover that we had prior and it just so happened that it was actually Debbie's son. Vanessa had oh. no idea that she was speaking to the individual. You know, she's like, oh, I know that picture because I took it. She even took the picture and so forth. And the original picture, let's keep in mind that the picture that everyone is seeing on the book, she recreated the photo by wow. setting it up. So we would have that. And of course, Vanessa and I wanted to extend to her to be a part of the book. So in the beginning of the book, someone told me about this today. They said, wow, that was so beautiful that you included the individual um, who created the madras that she was able to have before even the lady started to share in their stories that this person was given you know, an area where she can talk about a little bit of history of the Madras Absolutely. and what does the color mean, each I color and so forth. So I'm, I am just I'm, so proud. It was, it I, was I just amazing. want to say in this moment, I just want to say in this moment, Vanessa, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of this book because, you know, even before you get to the stories of the women, you come across this cover. And then we have the person who took the picture and then we're able to give a description of our local Madras. And then, of course, we have the forwarder, you know, Miss Yvette Della Bang that ushered in the, the women. And then, of course, Vanessa and I collaborated and wrote um, the, the story of how the book came, came to be. And, of course, we included you, Sammy. So with that being said, you know, the, 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 for, the essence of the book is in the beginning. And, you know, when Vanessa talked about it being um, a, a passion, a passion project, that mm -hmm. in itself, for me, it just says that. Yeah, so Vanessa, I think that, yes. with the cover, please. Yes, uh, yeah, but but be, yes, Vanessa, I want to hear your take on on the cover and Madras and everything. But I got to tell you, that is spot on because you're absolutely yes. right. When it starts with the cover, and mm -hmm. then it and, and then it talks about you know the the Madras, it kind of like sets the tone, right? Yeah. That this is something special. That this is not, you know. Anyway, so yes, Vanessa, tell me, talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Jonah, she summed it up beautifully. But you know, 
Uh -huh. I just, we wanted to make sure that we had the cover set and ready to go. And we wanted to be sure that we had the name of the book and everything ready to go. We didn't want that to be a hiccup with folks and be a hiccup with the with the co-authors. And we went back and forth on the madras and whether we should put it in. And we, you know, we thought about it and there's nothing more symbolic in the Virgin Islands than the madras. Yeah. And I said, it will be a nod to the culture. And if uh, men may not want to read that book, that cover is going to get their attention. Yeah. And when one sees that cover, there's going to be an automatic link with the U.S. Virgin Islands. And yeah. that cover is technically a showstopper. Yes, it is. But can I tell you something? Yes, the cover, that's why. The cover kind of sets the tone because the sto stories are showstoppers mm. too. And I think also <laughs> oh, what's, what's key here to mention is that, and I don't know, because I'm from Puerto Rico, so we're Caribbean, right? Um, and and in our mm -hmm. in our in our cultures, women are supposed to be, you know, with the machismo and all, submissive yeah. and not loud and not <laughs> assertive, or you know, like know our place and oh, that right. kind of right. But there's none of that here. Mm -hmm. It's all strong. I think I think that's a misnomer almost, yeah, right? That people, I think <laughs> it's a myth that. You know, Caribbean women, right, are yes. are culturally more submissive and all of that because yeah. every single voice thus far, and I know the rest is going to be the same, mm -hmm. are just strong, assertive, um, vulnerable, which is important. Mm -hmm. That makes you strong, mm -hmm. right? But then also decisive. Like everybody, mm -hmm. you know, has that, like, that's it. I'm moving forward. There's no looking back, right? That's kind of, kind of like a common thread mm -hmm. throughout the stories I've read so far. So yes. how, how do you feel about, you know, about that? And Because I haven't read the whole book, but you've read it. You yes, know, I have read the entire book. It's a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> It is. It's a, as you go high, as you said, you read one chapter, you're high and you read another chapter and you, you get like, oh my God, I can feel it for that person. And then you read another chapter, like Johanna, you're inspired and you read another chapter, like, how do you make it? Like I would have been dead by now. Yeah. It's, it's just a roller coaster of emotion. And when that gentleman said, I read that book in a day, I could not stop reading it. And just to see these women to break those ceilings, those mm -hmm. invisible ceiling, to break that cultural norm of what woman you think the, the woman should be like, a, ho a home wife or a mom. And no, these women are out there trailing the blazing trails and doing amazing things in their, their work today. So as I said, it's a roller coaster of emotion and no one is going to read that book and walk away the same as they started. And I want to add to that um, as Vanessa. Vanessa and I, we had different roles. And for me, I would be the one, you know, having, you know, these little private conversations, you know, messaging, texting, you know, doing the work along with Vanessa. But I have not read one story. If it's one story that I had a snippet of, listen, let me go ahead and set the scene. One evening, I was so tired. Oh, Vanessa and I would be back and forth on the phone and, you know, I'm going to take a nap or I'm working on, you know, our individual projects. And of course, the pa pa passion and purpose um, book. And I remember one evening, I have this pixie cut, as you can see. So, it was, I mean, it was like all It looks cute. So I love it. I had yeah. my, you know, I had my little glasses and so forth. And, you know, papers all over. And attorney Lydia Molinar, she sent me some information to just look at something for her. And I read, like, I think the first four sentence, four or five sentence. And I, I, I just started to tear up. I just started to tear up. And I called her and I said, oh, my goodness. I, you know, I had no idea, you know, everyone sees us as, you know, business women, you know, we, we have it all together, but we all have some sort of story as to where we was, you know, things just don't happen, you know, maybe for some, but that that's not always the mm -hmm. case. So even before that, um, for me coming off of my boutique at a touch and knowing that I wanted to, to reach women 
or God was showing me that I'm going to be reaching women at another capacity other than just beautifying them. You know, this just comes full circle. But I've had those intimate conversations with individuals who have um, shared that my father is going to be reading something for the first time. They're, they're in their 40s. You know, <laughs> Vanessa worked with one of our co-authors that she never spoke about something that occurred in her life, you know, with... Um, that that parents and this was therapy so just hearing these heartfelt um mm -hmm. synopsis of how the women are approaching their, their chapters that mm -hmm. right there i just held on to that i just held on to that and you know i was just like in constant prayer that wow vanessa as she have said before we have opened up a vault but we all have opened up a vault with women who are okay and they're ready to share no one was forced to write anything in the book or say, girl, you got to make it more sweeter. Everyone was given that opportunity to bring their story to life. And let me just go forward by saying that Vanessa and I, along with the publisher, Ms. Talisha Barry, we did have um, some few times on Zoom that she would share with the women how to go about coming about their chapter and writing mm. and bringing it forth. So women was just not told to just write and then hand it in. There was a first draft. There was a second draft. There were editors involved and so forth. Yeah, that's awesome. Pretty Vanessa, so that, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. So Vanessa, how many of the women would you say was this their first experience writing oh their goodness. stories, right? Like, because it must have been transformational for yeah. them, right? Yes. And how important yes. is that? How important is that? Oh, yeah. I think about in that book, I think maybe there were maybe three or four individuals who have written before. I need to get those numbers correct, but it's no more than about five who wow. have actually written yeah. and published. So we're talking about 15 or 16 brand new women for the very first time they're actually yeah. authoring something for the public consumption. And these yes. are women who have said, I always wanted to do this. I didn't know where to start. There was one particular um, co-author, Dr. Celia Nurse, and she had on her vision board that she was going to be a published author and a best, like she had it all laid out. Yes. And last week, on the 22nd, last week, Wednesday, those dreams were realized. And it just yes. goes to show you, if we were not obedient to that call, then these women would not have been able to live their dream, live their passion. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, very, very many of the folks in that book were first time authors and folks were like, you know, I've never written before. I don't know how to start. But as Johanna said, they had that guiding process. They had a framework in which they can start doing their writing. They were not left alone. They had me to call on. They had Johanna to call on if they're running into anything. But as Johanna said, there were people who were talking about stuff that they had never talked to any individual about before someone called me and said Vanessa I think I may need to go to therapy because mm -hmm. I have opened up Pandora's box and mm -hmm. I have not thought about these things in the past 40 years and it's now and it's just raw emotion that is emerging and I'm like girl mm -hmm. do what you gotta do <laughs> you know mm -hmm. but in that whole conversation she was just happy that it was out she just yeah. felt a relief yeah, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Listen, I can't say this Chills. enough. I'm I'm just so excited, so happy for you. I'm so I'm just in awe, right? Of all of this wonderful love and dedication and just everything. I mean, it's like you set your mind to do it, and here we are. It yes. got done, right? Yes. And and th there's nothing greater then see collaboration and that it can be done. So many times, you know, we, we see people that are very individualistic or, you know, seeking to do stuff on their own, but we can't work in silos anymore, right? It's so much yes. greater and yes. rewarding too, I think, yes. you know, and fun because the party's <laughs> on. Listen, when we get together, it's, it's on. <laughs> Right. So any last 
any last um, advice or comments or thoughts that you'd like to share, you know, um, uh, you know, with, with everyone that's listening and watching? Us, uh, Johanna. Well, I, you know, through this process, we have just said it all and just encouraging women that, of course, we are enough. And we hear these things all the time, these certain statements, you know, we are enough, you know, keep going, don't give up. So it's an individual, it, you know, it's an individual choice. So what we can do as women is just to continue tapping each other and to encourage one another and to just be authentic about it and just wanting other women to do well. We can all, we can all do well, we can all move forward, but it just has to, you know, be that individual choice and to be obedient to what's in your heart and the visions. I truly feel that those visions are given to us by our creator. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I'm, I'm just an encourager, an encourager and just wanting to just bring other women along. And I want to take this opportunity to share with you, Vanessa, that someone reached out to me this morning. Um, she's in Florida. She is from the Virgin Islands and she wanted to let me know to let us know that she has finished her chapter. So she's asking, you know, when is the ne when is the next <laughs> book and so forth. But, you know, I said right now we are just, you know, working right now with a passion and purpose. But again, just to sit with her and just to encourage her. That is what it was all about. And with that being said, I let her know that we are here to, to serve her and to share whatever, whatever information that we have to help her to move along. So just to hear that she got the information that was sent out, because Sami, there was a well-detailed um, statement that was sent out about becoming an author, how to come about it, you know, what's your investment and so forth. And some women right now are saying, wow, I didn't open it, or I, you know, I wish I had, you yeah. know, but women are still following the format. And they are coming along and writing their chapter. So now we have some women here that have still done it, may not have been a part of passion and purpose. So again, if we did not move accordingly, as Vanessa just said, and walk in that obedience, this is truly a prime example of, you know, withholding the things that yes. we can do to better someone. What if we did yes. not, you know, right. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. That's great. And there could always be a, a passion and purpose volume too. <laughs> we we would like to see, we would like to see uh, it's open for individual to take up the mantle, you yeah. know, take up the mantle. I consider myself a connector. Yeah. I consider myself just creating, inviting and connecting individuals to the, you know, what, whatever the linkage may be. So they yeah. too, again, can rise in their greatest potential. So who knows? There may be someone right now just thinking, you know what? I am going to be the one to pick up the mantle. And, mm -hmm. you know, we are here and we just wish them the utmost best. But I'm very That's excited, fun. not only yeah. for the ladies, but I'm very excited for Vanessa and I because we have some amazing things that, you know, heartfelt projects that we are working on. So we're, we're continuing to get back that's, to our that's, that's awesome. And you, Vanessa, yeah. any, any parting words for our, our viewers? Yes, yes. Well, Johanna, she said she's a connector and I consider myself a catalyst because I just like to go in and just agitate a little, give people what they need and step out of the way and let me see the magic happen. So I'm just a catalyst. And, you know, I told Joanna and I'm constant because we go walking in the mornings together and I would say to her, who needs to be in the book is going to mm -hmm. be the book. That was my constant mantra. She I said, sure who did. needs to be in the book is going to be in the book. And I remember when we got down to about 18 or 19 and oh my God, it was so like, we wanted that one last person. I'm like, oh, how are we going to do this? And we were just like out there pounding the pavement to get our one last woman. And then we ended up with two. <laughs> so we ended up with two women. So, you know, God just gave us, he just multiplied. Um, yeah. But I want to say to women out there that everyone has a story. 
everyone has a story and your story may not be, you know, in a book or may not be hit Amazon, but write it down. I always encourage people to write stuff down because we often forget the things we need to remember and remember the things we need to forget. So we need to write stuff down. And I am so delighted to have been a catalyst in this process. I have seen the joy I have seen the emotions that he has bring to these women who are part of this project. Yeah. And I have seen the, um, the potential that some women have gone to, to really make this happen. The spinoff, the things that they're doing. And I'm excited about the next uh, girlfriend's retreat because it's our, our desire to have as many women there as possible along with these hard copies so that people can get their autograph and maybe create a space where people could talk about their stories and just meet the women one and one and let's folks talk about the process and maybe we'll inspire someone to pick up the mantle and do passion and purpose too. That's wonderful. Listen, thank you for making the time to, you know, be on this call. I know you're extremely busy because this thing is like, you know, snowballing, <laughs> right? It's so great. Um, but I just had to, I just had to see you. I had to hear your voices. I had to Thanks. give you a hug, you know, all the way from <laughs> Orlando. And just to tell you again that I can't say enough how happy I am, how excited I am for you and how, you know, with every page, it's a, it's a, you know, it, yeah, this is a cover to cover read, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's hard to put down. Wow. So thank you. Wow. Thank, thank you for you. what you've done to impact, you know, uh, really the world and women and women and to give us a voice. So, uh, I love you and I can't wait to see you. Thank you so much Susan, for having us. Thank, thank you for all those folks who have supported the book. We've gotten almost 400 yes. sales and it's amazing to see. Yeah. Un beso. Number one Love bestseller you. in you. three categories. God bless you. Yes, pretty cool. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of I Have Something to Say, where subject matter experts are unafraid and unapologetic about sharing their perspectives regarding issues that impact our lives. They speak up because basically they give a shit. So if you're tired of canned answers and want to finally hear real people cut through the BS and talk about real issues, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Sami Heyman Marrero from Urbander, and behind our mixer is our producer, Chris Mayoka from You Do You.